And then I also want to add in live transcript. Oh, that's great. I haven't actually done that yet in any of my webinars. I keep on forgetting, <laughs> which so is I a shame because it's now a feature of Zoom. If you don't like the live transcript, you actually individually, you can, if you go to the bottom of your Zoom panel, you can see the live transcript options. You can turn it off on, on your view screen. So, but we kind of like it. So, so I think I am sharing. Yep, you are. Screen now, um, let me move some things around. Okay, and let me make this a little bit bigger because it's probably kind of small. I hope that's a little bit better yep. to you see. Can read it. Um, so this hopefully. I wasn't really sure how much information to include when I wrote this up. So I decided to do a pretty high level, quick summary sort of thing in terms of all of the training things that I do. Um, so I hope that this gave you a, a good idea in terms of the things that I think about and am and, and considering each year. Um, and so I split them up into early literacy slash ready to read, summer reading, economic development, civic engagement, teen services, and then other topics. Um, so none of this is set in stone. Some of this is stuff that I um, saw had was done before I started at the State Library and had decided to keep doing them. Some of these are things that I've just kind of picked up along the way, but I am not personally married to any of this. Um, so if there's something on here that you guys are like, yeah, we've done that for a while and it's not really useful, that's totally cool with me, <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> um, or if there's something that's missing on here that you'd like to see, that would also be great to know. Um, you might have noticed that there was a lot of stuff kind of pending on here. Um, so one of the projects that I'm, I've had on my to-do list for a while is creating more um, foundational courses for children's services and teen services. Um, because I know that there's like a, a hole in sort of teen services offering. So that's something that I'm trying to fill. Um, but also there's a lot of people who, not just in Montana, but when I've talked to other state libraries too, all across the country, um, especially in the smaller libraries, there's a lot of people who come into libraries who are maybe have a little bit of experience with libraries or maybe no experience with libraries or we're in like a library adjacent field and now are in libraries. Um, so there's like some things that you can figure out and learn very quickly on the job, but there's a lot of things that, you know, it might be useful if you could like have a nice little checklist of things to go through. Um, so for children's services and just kind of intro to library stuff um, in the children's services field um, is something that me and a few other states have been working on to kind of get everybody on the same page um, and have like a high level foundational course uh, for people to go through. So that's something that I'm working on at the moment. I'm hoping that it will be finished sometime. S nah. Don't say soon. Yeah. <laughs> we're in, I don't know. We're maybe, in the middle of transition. <laughs> so, um, so that's taking up a lot of our um, training staff. But it, yeah. Really Eventually these will be self-paced courses. And the way I'm envisioning this is this is something that all library directors or supervisors are aware of. So when new staff come on or when there's turnover or whatever, you can just immediately give this to somebody and say, hey, this is a great just like intro, like overview of what you can expect. Um, obviously some things are like, not the same at all libraries, but um, we're hoping to keep it general enough that it's useful for everybody who's just starting out. Um, so that's what these these pending things are, <laughs> um, in case people had questions about that. Um, one question I did have was, if you can see this pending thing here, um, this was something that I'd sort of started before the pandemic. Um, and then I kind of forgot about it. And then I remembered it when I was 
putting this together. Uh, and I'm, I, I, I think that I, there's been like interest, I think, from people in this topic, but I don't know actually how many people, especially after the pandemic, are like, yes, let's do this now and let's learn more about this, or maybe not. Um, so I took the facilitator training for this course. Um, it's in Web Junction um, as a self-paced thing. And um, I wasn't sure if I should offer this for like a small cohort for librarians. So that's a question that I had. And then I think another question that Joe and I had was the ready to read rendezvous for next year versus fall workshops versus other training options. But maybe we'll talk about that later. Um, well, maybe I actually think it's a good time. I mean, first of all, if anybody has any questions for you about your report yes. or comments about it, I'd be. Yes. And any questions about any of this? Does something seem horribly out of place or horribly missing or anything like that? Anything surprising? We just make up for it. So if I could just ask like just a clarifying question about lifelong learning. Yeah. That is basically birth to adult. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder if we want to talk about adults a little bit more. Um, I know some of the things that come up in Flathead County are services to support seniors um, and outreach to seniors who may be homebound. Um, COVID threw an extra wrench into that, but also um, social isolation that impacts adults is a big thing. Um, what else occurred to me? Well, Missoula this, does all of that, um, you know, like the senior cafe or- um, Yeah, memory the, cafes. Those, or yeah, there. memory That's, cafe. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had, before COVID, we had a partnership with our health department called Better Together that had some initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was about social isolation and service to elders. And mm -hmm. then also under economic development, um, I don't know. I just had like vague thoughts about sort of what's going on with the economy right now and um, labor shortages and things. So support for workers and or business owners. Mm -hmm. um, for the economic development section. So we have a few trainings and like the small learning cohort is the, the big thing that we've done. Mm -hmm. um, but we're sort of, I mean, I'm also kind of unclear still as to what direction to go in exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're like, oh, we're not really sure what's going on. That's, that's, that's accurate because <laughs> that's what's happening on my end too. Mm -hmm. um, and the, in the time that I've been working on it, I found that like, despite, I work with Ann Booth, who's our economic development consultant, and despite the like plans that we make, the people that we reach out to, the meetings that we schedule, like those things don't actually have any bearing on whether a project can start or not. It really kind of depends on who's available and who's around at the moment. So it's mm -hmm. kind of serendipitous. Um, so I'm not really sure where that will go next. Um, a lot of people seem very interested in working with libraries, um, but like don't really have, like my preference would be for them to tell me and to tell us like, what do you guys want? And they're not really sure yet in terms of poten like potential partners that we're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, or in some cases, they're sort of like, well, we're already doing that. So why would we have other people do that? <laughs> so that's been kind of an interesting conversation. Um, but yeah. if you have like 
So that's kind of like from the top down approach. But if you guys have some sort of personal need in your local community that you're like, we think the library is in a great place to fit in with this, mm. or like we have these partnerships already, and like there's a su successful program or model we could create there. That's totally cool. Let me know. And I'm happy to work with you on that because sometimes having that example is really great to show to other people mm -hmm. too. So the focus right now for me is on entrepreneurial support and people who are starting their own businesses and kind of going through that design process and starting from scratch, like that very early stage stuff. But if you have something based on like job searching, remote work, or um, like professional development or, or any other realm of economic development that um, your library is really well poised to help with, that is also helpful for me to know and potentially support um, because from the, from the top down, um, it's kind of, <laughs> kind of a jungle. Yeah, I see that. Um, to your point too about, uh, Martha, about services to seniors, um, I don't know if you all saw that I just sent something out on Wired in my weekly resources email. Um, the Montana Arts Council has partnered with Lifetime Arts, which is a national organization that's focused on creative aging. Um, so instead of like, like I found that there's two kinds of adult programming. There's like programming to bring people up to like, at like average, healthy, happy, you know, people who need help with um, health stuff or need help with like finding jobs or finding whatever. And then there's also people who are like healthy, happy, healthy, happy, and then getting them to thrive. And mm -hmm. so Lifetime Arts is really focused on um, providing creative opportunities for older adults um, and getting them to that thriving stage. Um, and so they have, they, they're sponsoring three workshops in August virtually, um, and they're looking for libraries to attend um, and learn more about this. So if anyone's interested in that, um, I think there's three or four spaces um, and they're looking for libraries who are interested to, to come. Are those face-to-face -face trainings or? No, they're virtual, oh, you um, but that. it's sorry. August, <laughs> huh? Oh, you did say that, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's August 9th, 10th and 11th from nine to 11 a.m. And they really want someone um, who can attend all three. Um, although I do think they're being recorded. Well, I'm one of those seniors, so I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So no, that's I a potential that. avenue that, um, and that was something that Montana Arts Council and I had been talking about before the pandemic. Um, and then I think we both forgot <laughs> about each other for a while. And now we're circling back around. I think this kind of brings up one of the issues that, oh, sorry, I guess somebody else coming in. Um, that, you know, I think this committee will maybe help us sort out in, in something I, I, you know, in my position at the State Library, as, you know, my training is in instructional design, not in librarianship. And I'm always trying to help our staff to sort out when something is really a training issue. And, um, and what Amelia does is not exclusively training. Um, she's developing these um, networks and contacts from, as she mentioned, the top down. And we're always looking for uh, libraries that have programs that can scale up. And we can help with that scaling up at the state level by finding those statewide partners that kind of click in and fit in and have resources that libraries um, can benefit from. And so that's that's kind of a, uh, she, she does a lot of training because training becomes kind of necessary to in, increase the programming, but it's not just training. And for some of these things, training isn't the issue. It's getting like the economic development piece, it's getting, um, figuring out what exactly in each community a library's appropriate role is with the other 
players in their community. And it's so different from one community to the next. So yeah, but there's some things that, you know, maybe all librarians need to know. They all need to know about what does a small business association do and how do you get in touch with them? And you need, you all need to know, you know, um, where do you find resources to help a, a patron who's job searching and those kinds of things. So it's, yeah, it's like, is it a training issue? Is it not a training issue? Is it a combination? That's something mm -hmm. that we're always, and then I think the other thing I, I will point out about your report, um, Amelia, and I, I kind of followed a fairly similar format after from what you did, is that it does demonstrate this effort we've been making at the State Library to pivot away from one-off, a lot of just one-off webinars. Um, it, so many other people are producing those and doing it well, and we're trying to um, uh, apply our resources to creating content that's either Montana specific or has a kind of deeper learning impact than um, an informational one-off webinar. So I don't know if you notice that when you see our webinars, but we're really looking at things and trying to be apply our um, apply ourselves so that we are planning webinars that are either information you just can't get anyplace else because it is Montana specific or um, trying to get uh, cohorts going or kind of deeper opportunities to learn together as a, as a Montana group, a professional learning community in Montana. So we've been really kind of trying to make that pivot. It's, it's not always easy. Sometimes we fall back into everybody wants a webinar on this, so we just do it. But um, we're really trying to um, apply our resources and be pretty um, uh, um, intentional about when uh, the training that we're throwing at you. Well, we're doing a lot of talking and Martha, I really appreciate your stepping up. So anyone else have any other comments about this? Just be mindful of the time. Yeah, let me get on to my report and I'll take the screen back. <clears throat> let me pull that up. You'll have to probably remove your or turn um, stop sharing. Thank you. Thanks. And I'll put my report. Well, I think I will. That's not the one. There it is. Okay. I'll figure this out. All right, you should see it now. Yes. Can you nod if you see it? <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Um, and let me make this a little bit bigger too. Sorry for the. So um, in my report, I also started out with a little overview, just a reminder that our primary audience are public library staff and board members. Um, but we try to augment the training from other providers. And so I, I'm a big fan of Venn diagrams. So um, I, when I'm trying to think of, should we be doing this training or not? Or when I, we're developing training, I try to think of you know, who the audience is for our training and it's primarily public library staff or a board member. Um, it's Montana specific the content that's the perfect piece of content that's appropriate for us to be training on. And then um, even better, and this is directly from our state librarian, she likes to see our training support and MSL program or mandate. So when I can get all those things, three things happening, then I know that's a training we should be providing um, and not waiting for someone else to provide. So there's a little bit more information there. And then um, I just went through a quick list of regularly scheduled things that we do. So like this year, we are going to do a um, virtual fall workshops. Um, the last time we did a face-to-face -face fall workshops was in September of 2018. 
and um, we uh, we have not abandoned summer leadership institutes, but we have put them on hiatus this year because um, we're doing a director's institute that was delayed from last year. And the last time we actually did a director's institute was 2013. So it's been quite a long time since we've really focused specifically on library directors. And even that one we um, permitted, um, some libraries wanted to send some um, assistant directors. And so um, that was, it's been quite a long time. So this year we'll be doing one at the Ursuline Center next, starting at the end of next month. We'll be there for four days and we have pretty good um, registration attendance. I think we're, up, we're closing in on about 35. Um, well, maybe a few less by the time I take out some state library staff that will be there. Um, and we do have a very, I would say that the goal of that is really kinship and collaboration is the theme. And the goal is to come up with the next big idea for um, a public library collaborative venture statewide that we can scale up either regionally or statewide. We do trustee training workshops every year. Um, most recently, Terry Profota from Sage Solutions, that's a company that works with a not-for-profits in Montana and does a lot of training and consulting work. She's, she was doing some work with boards on um, the board director relationship and, and um, the if, you know, efficient purpose, efficient ac um, actions and purpose of boards. And, uh, and then we did, um, we, we do work with uh, library strategies. They're actually gonna be coming and doing um, some, they're doing some work with Tracy on an interstate project that she's working on right now as well. And we've worked with United for Libraries. And if you didn't know, because I didn't know, <laughs> we have a membership with United for Libraries, which we're pretty sure um, as, of, as of yesterday in this discussion, we're pretty sure that all libraries in Montana can take advantage of that membership to attend United for Libraries um, and take advantage of their resources. So check back with me if you're interested in that. When we get a little more information, I'll, we'll post something about it. Um, let's see, so I mentioned some of the things that some of my colleagues do. The MSC Go Live trainings are always going on. Those are multi-day events when a library joins the shared catalog and the annual meeting of the Montana Shared Catalog always involves training. And Jennifer is doing her project, Montana Memory Project, when new contributors come on, she does one-on-one -on -one training um, with those groups. So she will usually go out, but more lately, of course, doing that virtually. And then, so these are the kinds of things that we have offered on site in the past. Um, so of course, nothing in 2020, but you, so I gave you 2019 and 2018 to give an idea. This getting to know you orientation is where state library staff from all of our different departments do a little short um, presentation about what they do. And we invite people who are new to the library world and just wanna know what the state library does to come into Helena and get to meet everybody. We're moving that um, to a different format online this year and it may stay online after that. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, some advantages to getting people to come into Helena and seeing things, but there you go. And then it comes to webinars. And as you can see, we do, of course, we did a ton of webinars in 2020. And this doesn't even count all the webinars we did. Um, we facilitated for the Montana Library Association when they had to cancel their appointment, but this was, that was an unusual year. Um, I would say an average year at the state library. Back, let's see, so when I started the state library, we were ramping up to doing almost 100 webinars a year. We decided when we looked at our attendance that that was probably overkill and um, people couldn't get to all of them and they were starting to be sort of perfunctory, we thought, not necessarily really good, good quality learning. So we've scaled back a bit and we try to keep our webinars to 30 or 40 a year, but we did more than that last year because of COVID. Um, and that way they are, you know, they meet those criteria. They're Montana specific. They support a program or activity and they're really directed to public libraries or boards. Um, 
And so now it's, I mean, if you look at 2019, that's sort of more typical um, webinar activity. And that's really it. I just um, want to spend a little bit of time here talking about self-paced learning because we are right now um, in the process of ramping up our, our own Moodle site. So we will have a course management system for the state library. And um, we have been developing some content on a, on a borrowed site, uh, both Kylie and or I should say all Kylie, or Amelia and I, but the state librarian Jenny intends for the other parts of the state library, the GIS folks, the natural heritage folks, the um, talking book library to all make use of that Moodle site. But um, the three of us are kind of the, the first ones out of the gate with it. We expect to have um, these things launched next month. The Fundamentals of Librarianship course is an eight module self-paced course. There's a quiz option in each module that you can, um, if you perform adequately on the 10 question quiz, you can gain credit for that module. So if it's stuff you already know, you don't have to work your way through the um, other training, you can get credit for it. Um, the MSC modules, this is, Kylie can talk, can answer any questions you have about those, but they're really intended as just in times basics training. So for staff to either review or for new staff, and she's working on um, developing some sort of learning pathways so that people who are coming into working with the shared catalog in different capacities at a library will have a specific kind of set of modules they work through. And <clears throat> we've got some other uh, intentions with Moodle. We plan to use Moodle's um, forum activity so that when we're bringing people in for something like the Director's Institute, they can continue to have um, online asynchronous discussion and we can still you know, put all of our resources in Moodle so it can support that face-to-face -face training. So pretty excited about, about Moodle and where we're gonna go with that. So, and if you don't know, Moodle is like an online course. If you've ever taken an online course, it's, this is probably the most broadly used online course system in the world. And it's very well supported in state government and, um, and in Helena, we have a lot of Moodle people in Helena, so. So that's it. That's my report. And um, I'll uh, question comments. I see some things in the chat. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh. ready to read in the past, it's been quite large, but in the future, I'm hoping to make it a smaller group. Yeah. Okay. That was a really fast tour. Is this helpful at all to give you? A sense of what we've been doing in the past and and just like Amelia, this doesn't, this isn't necessarily, I'm not presenting this as a blueprint blueprint for the future at all. In fact, I think one of the reasons we formed this committee is that we're looking to really kind of reassess where we are. I'm leaving this position at the end of the year, and that's a really great opportunity for, you know, change. What are you saying to us, Joe? You're leaving? Oh. I am in retiring at the end of the year. No. First week of January. Yeah, it's no. true. It's fabulous. It's going to yeah, be it's some good for you. new person. And besides, the people I know that are interested in my job are like so talented that and I was telling Jenny, I said, I'm so thrilled when people ask me um, because it's like, wow, that person wants my job. Uh, well, when I know, I'm sitting out, here, Joe, being like, la, 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 I can't hear you. <laughs> Everybody has to go sometime. I've been here long enough. This is my 11th year at State Library. So, but you're very kind. So getting oh, this committee we'll together, I think, is part of that. It'll help with that transition, too. You'll be able to tell the next person all kinds of stuff that they, you can make up stuff when they come in. <laughs> well, just for what it's worth. Out here on the ground, things do not feel normal at all, like at all. 
And looking at all of these trainings, it's like, oh, that was before. Yeah. And now we're in this, uh, this totally other realm. Like things just feel very strange. Um, I don't really know what to recommend except for a, a super nimble approach. Yeah. Where you can kind of like carve out craft quickly pop up um, things that are extremely timely because the situation on the ground is just so fluid and um, it's so different from the past. So well, I, I, that's worth it. I really think you, I mean, you hit it. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a few other people nod. I, I think that's so true. I, for, for virtual fall workshops, I, you know, we've had our first couple of little organizational meetings. I haven't really planned anything. And I, I told the group, I just don't, it's in, no, we're going to do it in November. Um, I, I'll do a save the date soon, but I don't really want to plan anything for exactly that reason, at least till after the director's Institute. And we've kind of heard from people, you know, what we get what's going on and and I can kind of start to make some assessment about what the needs are out there. But um, I mean, obviously, the, if there's a good presenter, we want what we did with virtual fall workshops last year, um, we had our attendance was good. Almost everybody who registered to attend live did attend live, which was great. I didn't really expect that. I mean, I really thought we'd have, with webinars, people who register, we get about a 30% drop off rate for people mm. attending live, which is fairly average in the industry. Somewhere between 30 and 50% actually, people who register for a webinar actually do attend it live. But we had very, almost 100% um, attendance live. And we had planned them as live events. There were only sections of some of them that were recorded. And this was, to me, this was the most um, interesting statistic that came out of our evaluation. Fully 10% of the people who filled out the evaluation for fall workshops told us that they had never attended a statewide conference before, ever. Mm -hmm. And um, that meant that we were reaching, an, to me, a new audience that um, it probably isn't going to come to a face-to-face -face training, my guess is, mm. you know, and I think, so I think the virtual, doing virtual training is, doesn't, we don't want to never do a face-to-face -face fall workshop again, we do, but I don't think we can give up on the virtual thing. I think there's some, some positives have come out of that, so. So Amelia did, and I do have a specific question for you today, and that is about scheduling. Mm -hmm. The fall is getting busy. Um, we have the Directors Institute that starts at August 3rd, 30th and goes through September 2nd. We have um, a, uh, what, what you're looking at doing a, um, oh, is this next year, Amelia, that you're planning? Yeah, this is, this is for next year. 2022, um, yes. So yeah. we're thinking ahead. <laughs> we yeah, have, so there's the, the big MLA two regional conferences happening in August. So the MPLA and PNLA and MLA. And um, Pam, do you remember the exact dates of that? I see you're here. Thought you might have those yes that would be i believe august 3rd 4th 5th something like that in missoula right yeah in missoula for sure i keep saying it's in billings but it's not i know it but it's in missoula <laughs> <laughs> and and we talked about actually doing a face-to-face -face fall workshops next year and then amelia would like to do the ready to read rendezvous next year and then there is also an ARSL conference and um, there's the fall retreat. I'm assuming the MLA might want to. So we just kind of wanted to like, so which, how much is too much when you, especially when we have that big, big conference happening in August, are these totally separate audiences? Do you think, I mean, is the ready to read and she's going to do it for what, 25 or 30? Yeah. Well, I, I'm hoping to do it in Lewistown so it can make it a little bit easier for everyone 
to drive to as opposed to it's usually been in Helena or Bozeman. Um, so um, I think so they were kind of have September, weren't you? Yeah, I was looking. Well, actually, so I did a room block at the Calvert um, tentative room block uh, October 23rd, 24th, 25th, because actually everything else is booked up <laughs> in September and October, even more than a year out. So that was the only weekend available. I didn't ask about November because I just think the weather gets a little dicey at that point. You're um, taking a risk in, in October. That yeah. Was. So like late October, I was like, oh, you know, that's still kind of who knows when <laughs> the roads will be like. Um, but I mean, normally, because normally I think what happens is the years that there's a face-to-face -face fall workshops there's not a face-to-face -face ready to read rendezvous. Like those are staggered. Uh, um, but because of, of COVID, everything's been pushed to this year. Um, and so, and especially with the MLA PLA thing, like normally that's not a competition because that's in April, but um, you know, that is a really big conference and a lot of people might want to be like, that's my time to travel and that's my time to go. So yeah, the other thing looking ahead to 2022 is that um, we are, you know, with me leaving that position will probably be, it'll probably be two to three months before that position gets filled. So you're looking at somebody coming into the position probably in, you know, March or April, maybe even later. That's pretty late. If you're going to plan a fall workshops for September, that's, yeah really too late to get started. Um, and so we kind of have to make a decision now if we want to do a face-to-face -face fall workshops next year and set aside the funding for that and get, we need to get, I, I will need to, to secure a location for us to, to do that. And if you're gonna be in Lewistown, we could go further west and do it in Helena or Missoula. But if- But I, I think also the concern was that we wouldn't be able to, there wouldn't be enough funds to do both a uh, ready to read rendezvous and fall workshops. So I think it is likely that we'll probably have to choose one or the other just because, I mean, that's the other reason we staggered it because. Um, yeah, they're both expensive when you do. They're both quite pricey. <laughs> and Amelia actually does offer, she pays the hotel rooms for the attendees for ready to read rendezvous. Mm -hmm. And we with fall workshops, we don't, we pay, the money is in our presenters and um, and in, you know, we have to pay our staff travel to get there as where the expenses are. But mm -hmm. it just, it feels like, it felt to us like it's a lot going on. Um, and Tracy has, yeah, she'd like to do something with the Leadership Institute next year too. And it, doing all three doesn't, probably isn't possible to fund or much less staff, we run, we start to run into, um, it's really difficult to get those, all those things done well. So we, we just want your feedback on, you know, what, what do you miss the most and what is, you know, what's the most important thing for us to be doing a year from now. And I, as much as I take your comments to heart, Martha, we still have to plan far enough ahead that we can mm -hmm. get a hotel. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't, I, I really don't know um, what's the right, what the right thing to do. I mean, my, my gut is to go ahead and Amelia's here. She's, she's got a cohort with ready to read. It's important to, to support those early literacy initiatives that we have going on across the state that are so successful. Um, so to me, that would be the, if it was just me, I'd say that's a priority, but I'd want to hear what you guys have to say. Well, um, Given the um, travel restrictions for um, 
seems like half the year in Montana. I, I wouldn't mind the, or I almost prefer the online trainings recorded so that, um, you know, not everyone can, we can't tra uh, pull the whole staff off the floor to go to wi uh, video trainings or, so it would be nice to have recordings. Um, um, yeah, and having grown up in the flyover country in Eastern Montana, um, <laughs> it's a long haul to Helena and Missoula. Yeah. So I think, I, th I don't know, I, I may have missed this part, but is training for uh, videos more well attended than face-to-face? -face? So given the one example, which is a single data point, so shouldn't be considered um, a great example, but we did virtual fall workshops once and our attendance was good. I think we had 70 people register overall for our face-to-face -face trainings in different years, we've had between 100 and 150. So um, it was less, but I will say that we know for sure that there were some watch parties um, last mm -hmm. November where libraries did get together and, you know, small groups and watched um, and participated, I should say, not just watched because they were really intended as fully participatory um, uh, events. They, they, that's why we, that's the reason we didn't record all of them was because, you know, a lot of it was discussion and small breakout room stuff and an activity. And so um, that's, they weren't, they, it's not really a, appropriate to record those that are not good for learning, but um, to somebody watching the recording um, independently. So I think it was a, very successful model. And like I said, I'm very excited to learn that a number of the people who did attend had never been to another statewide training. And so I think you're right. I think there's always going to be a group of, I, sometime between now and the end of the year, I'm really hoping to do to pull some more data out of Aspen on our registration and on the CE um, reports to see what kind of training different people from different areas are going to. And I'd really like to find out if we, you know, who the librarians are who aren't reporting any training to us. Um, because I think you're right. I think the more rural, the smaller the library, um, the people who are working at a larger library, um, but maybe on a, a in a starter kind of role or a lesser role, um, they're not making as much money are not probably going to be hoofing it off to Missoula for the four days of the regional conference, you know, because those are expensive. Yeah. You, the hotel, we can't, none of the state library, we've been freaking out about the hotel costs for, <laughs> the, what is it? It's like 2.30 a night or something. And for the conference in, in Missoula is so our Montanans. Yeah. Are we even, are people even going to go? Um, Desiree can go cause she lives there, but you know, you guys can all come camp at my house in Stevensville. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Um, but that's another thing to consider. I mean, we, tr we make our va training available for free and we'd get a state rate and find a hotel that will give us a state rate. So you're going to get a hotel for a hundred and, 20 bucks a night and or I think in Helena right now it's still like under a hundred dollars and that makes a difference but that's still too much money for that part-time librarian in um you know in who lives in Opime and you know is got a nine-hour drive to Helena and is not gonna at her $16 an hour job isn't gonna drive to take three days away from her ranch to come to training either so and those are the people honestly I worry a lot about because they're you know they're right on the front line and um and who else is going to train them I mean if we don't if we don't do it we that's so that's my posture on it yeah and then Dave for data point number two um, <laughs> the virtual Ready to Read Rendezvous is happening um, this year on September 30th. Um, 
And when I sent out the application, there's a morning workshop and an afternoon workshop. And each workshop is scheduled for three hours. Um, so it's nine to 12 for the morning one, one to four for the evening one. And you can choose to apply for attending either the morning or the afternoon or both, if you're interested in both. Um, so um, I wasn't really sure like how many people would apply um, because for the in-person ready to read rendezvous, there's always a lot of interest. Um, and so it's been interesting to see that I think there's 15 applications so far and um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I should like reach out individually to libraries because I know that there's like there's like new children staff definitely Ooh. during the pandemic. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll reach out to, to people that I know are new to the state or new to libraries and see if they're interested. Um, but I'm also like, I wonder if this just means that people would prefer to go to the in-person thing mm. or also maybe it's a scheduling thing because like Cindy and I were talking um and we we're like should we schedule this during like a week or should we schedule this on the weekend should we we were like we're not really sure and so I think I was like oh Joe scheduled fall workshops during the week so maybe let's do that um because I was like I don't know I feel bad about scheduling things on the weekend <laughs> um so maybe that's why people also haven't applied um, but so there's like some interest, but not as much as there usually is for the in-person event. Um, so oh. wait, when is the in-person ready to read? When, when is it? it? Yeah. I thought it was virtual. Well, yeah. So the, the, the one happening this year on September 30th is virtual. Okay. Um, but the one that we've been like theoretically saying, and we're like, should we do this or not is scheduled for October 23rd, 21st to the 23rd. It's, it's a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 2022. So I have a tentative room block at the Calvert in Lewistown. Um, but that brings us to our original question of like, ready to read rendezvous or fall workshops. We're probably gonna have to choose one or the other mm -hmm. for 2022. We're not gonna blame you guys if you if you, you know, say definitely keep ready to read and. <laughs> but to to still to probably a do a virtual fall workshops, but yeah, um, but yeah, I I don't know. I'm I like we're fine with whatever, but to to put a point towards fall workshops, um, like you could argue that ready to read is already very well established, and there's lots of other trainings and opportunities um, and examples. Um, and fall workshops can oftentimes be a really great like networking time for just Montana librarians. Like I remember the one I went to, I think when I was first hired, like back in 2018. Billings, that was the last one. That was the last one, was really great for me because it was like, it was really fun, um, really great way to meet librarians from all around the state. It, that was really helpful for, for me just to like, and learn a lot too, but just to really meet, talk with other people um, in a more intimate environment than I think other conferences can be, so. You could still keep your dates though. I mean, those are, uh, that's, that, those dates would actually work for fall workshops in Lewistown. We could use rooms at the library to expand this yeah the so that, uh, library yeah, that within <laughs> the calvert and the library are block part they can easily walk yeah. back and forth but so yeah the october 21st through 23rd dates could either be for the ready to read rendezvous or fall workshops you can also you know this is an option you can always say well at the fall workshops we're going to designate a day that or we're mm. going to make sure we have early childhood programming yeah, there. But yeah, so we're just we're real. I mean, you can tell we're really like, we just don't know what to do. So maybe just keep the dates and wait and make that decision later. What do you what do you all think? We do have to start 
talking to presenters and things too, because getting them into the state from elsewhere. Um, Did you get a lot of interest for this one that's coming up in September? That's what you're saying. It's the registration's no. a little. Um, yeah, I've only gotten about 15 applications. So oh, okay. Far. For some reason, I thought you were saying, I got very confused. I thought you were <laughs> saying that you were having trouble getting interest for the next year's in person. Oh, no, 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 no. I haven't. Gotcha, gotcha. That's that's still tentative and stuff. This is well, this was all for the this year's. I just found your um, your reminder email in my like clutter folder and sent it out to our youth services staff. Oh, OK. So <laughs> you might get a bunch more. Um, that's fine. <laughs> It looks like such a great um, speaker lineup. And um, yeah, I wonder if something like what Joe's saying is call it good for this year for ready to read plan fall workshops for next year with and making sure to include an early, an early childhood, track. early brain development, whatever thing yeah. within there somehow mm -hmm. um, just to float some kind of proposal. That's what I might say. That sounds good to me. Maybe, maybe you should bring your um, sign language trainer oh, out on cool. Hannah. She's really popular. And Kathy was amazing. I mean, even her virtual training was like so great, um, really engaging, really energetic. So I can only imagine that in person, she'd be even better. <laughs> What was she, she call herself? Like happy hands or something? It's really cute. A uh, little hand signing. Little hand signing. Yeah. Yeah. She recommends some specific like emotional emotion signs that they mm -hmm. use during story times, and mm -hmm. it really it's it's really linked into the lib to library work really well. And um, yeah, she's it would be great to get her out here. Um, well, that, that does sound like a decent plan because, you know, then we could, um, we'd have to uh, find some additional sleeping rooms and in Lewistown, which is easy to do and, um, and, lo and lock in the library as a separate venue. You and I could work on that together. Yeah. It's just that we were so cognizant that things are booking up so fast. And we also realized, you know, with this stuff happening in Missoula, maybe people will be like, I want to send my staff to that. And so I can't afford to send them to a fall workshops. But it, I'm also, it's, that's going to be a very expensive mm. <laughs> jaunt down to Missoula to take advantage of that remarkable you know, once every, a decade or maybe once in a lifetime regional training that actually happens in Montana at the really high end training. We don't want to discourage people from going to that, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to eat up your travel budget like big time. And so there's that. Maybe, um, maybe we will sit on this a and keep those dates and make sure, check and see what other options we have in Lewistown for late October and not firm up anything for a couple of months while we um, cogitate about this a little bit. <laughs> I just wanted very briefly, and I, I won't take any more of your time because we're up on the top of the hour. I wanted to just show you the, where is it? Um, oh, I think it's in my, it's online. Here it is. Um, let me stop sharing, do a new share. Here it is. So um, sometime in the next, do you see something new now? Uh, I see a sliver of a Word document. Okay, let me see if I can, if, I didn't think it came out quite right. I can see part of the document name, which is MLN Service Review Free. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let me just pull it up and take a look at it. Yeah, so this is, um, darn it. My computer is still thinks it has two screens and it doesn't at the moment. Is that any better? 
That's much better. Good. Um, so since we're kind of making this, um, these core services committees work, kind of making it up as we go along, which means you guys get to make it all up. You can do whatever you want and we're gonna be cool with that. Um, Jen, Jenny and the leads have kind of come up with this um, kind of document. It's still in draft form, which is why I haven't actually shared it with you publicly yet. Um, but I wanted to let you know that sometime in the next couple of months, we'll probably start working on using this framework to describe what this committee does. So I'm gonna email um, a link to this document to you just to have, um, and we'll be following up on this later. But basically, um, sometime between now and next spring, the um, state librarian is gonna ask each committee to complete this form. So we have a description of what the committee is and, um, and what it's kind of, what the services related to this committee are that the state library does. And then we'll start talking this kind of about the basically kind of the uh, um, outcomes that we'll be working on here. And then she really likes this idea of us having a real strong future focus so that, um, and I'd like to see this too. I'd like us to know that, you know, we're moving our training act and professional development activities in this direction um, at the State Library and everybody can kind of understand that. So, and she's very interested in hearing from all of our committees about uh, uh, partnerships that the State Library should be developing and nurturing. Um, so that support our core services. So our core service for this committee is professional development and training. Sometime in the next couple of years after I leave, there's gonna be an effort to um, really take a hard look at the certification program and um, uh, adjust that. And this committee could have a maybe a lead role in, in that work as well. So I just wanted to let you know that this is kind of in the background of what the State Library is doing with all of our core services committees, but our committee is the only one that has met twice. <laughs> so we're really at the nascent stage here. And um, I will set up a meeting for us again next month. Um, and uh, actually, I think I'm going to wait and do our meeting in September only because of the between the Director's Institute and vacation that I have scheduled, it will be really hard for me to get a meeting mm -hmm. next month. So if you guys are all okay with us skipping a month, um, I'll, I'll put us into September and, um, and by then, you know, some of the other committees will have met and we might have, you guys get to figure out what it is you do. That's the, the really important point. And we, we haven't come to that decision yet. So um, we would like your input, obviously, on things, but in terms of what authority the committee has, that's kind of up for grabs. And um, we'd really like to, you know, I mean, if you have an opinion about it, talk to each other, feel free. <laughs> and understand, though, that, um, you know, we do fall under the Montana right. Sunshine Laws, so uh, don't you can't make any decisions, but be talking to your colleagues, I should say, rather than to each other, because um, any any decisions the committee makes has to be in an open meeting. That's about it for the day. Oh. I, I'm very appreciative of your time. I know we're just throwing a bunch of stuff at you, but we're also trying, it's like spaghetti against the wall, trying to figure out what sticks. So um, feel, feel that you have all the power in the world to decide what does stick. <laughs> Anything in the chat box that I missed? Need to sign off. Yep. Everybody needs to jump off. So I'll let you go. Thank you.